What is going on? I am Cyber, your host, and this is going to be game one of a best of three series between Green Zero as a Green GDI in the top left side of Tournament Tower, and in the bottom right side, we do have Spectre as the Marked of Kane, and this is indeed, indeed, in fact, from the GameReplays.org, uh, let's see here, August 25th, Kane's Wrath 1v1 Tournament, which, uh, just a little bit of information in case you were wondering which I know you weren't wondering but it's cool to know anyways is the entire tournament was played on the Kane's Wrath unofficial 1.02 plus patch oh what in the world are you doing Spectre we do have some shadow team rush build I haven't even seen anything like this almost ever I have seen a couple of games that feature something like this and I do believe that two shadow teams is not enough. I believe you need four to do enough damage to do uh, to take down things like refineries and also production structures. I think he's just going to be doing a little bit of harassment, maybe take out a power plant here and there. But Green Zero going to be playing a little bit more standard. Yeah, he is going to snipe a power plant, which is so, so annoying. And now Green Zero is like, oh, crap. Got to throw down some watchtowers. Got to try and take care of these guys as best I can. But they are going to be hiding over here. Actually, really surprised to see no watchtowers out of green zero at this time does like how do how would he not know that he lost that he has nothing to really kill this off which is quite curious because the pit bull all right now the watchtower is queued up so he's going to wait to throw that down actually going to throw it down in between the power plants we wouldn't have suspected that but going to be moving his mcv already and it, it gets immediately spotted by green zero's rifleman squad and oh they do manage to snipe a power plant so the power plant actually I think working a little bit against Green Zero there, as I think it did block off the attack, the line of sight for that uh, for that watchtower. And now he is down to just half as many shock, half as many shock troopers. Not not quite the right name, but shadow teams for this. And this pit bull should be enough to keep them at bay. Oh, just kidding! Because the power's down. That extra refinery was a bit too much, and they are not going to be able to get that power plant able to take it down to half health. But that is going to be it. And so Spectre, he is going to be getting out another refinery, possibly. This is a bit much, as you can see. Those three harvesters on one refinery tends to lead to at least one harvester being kind of the odd one out. He's definitely playing hardcore third wheel. But now with that two and four, that is a great ratio to have. And already this game shaping up to be interesting. I don't know if it'll be super awesome, crazy, big battle macro game or not. We did see some interesting beginnings out of Green, out of not Green Zero, but out of Spectre on the other hand. Spectre, and oh yeah, the uh, the Rocket Trails, that was an addition for 1.02. But anyways, uh, other than, yes, uh, going back to that discussion I had like three minutes ago about 1.02, Green Zero actually going to be doing... Quite a surprising amount of damage, considering he was almost able to kill that Harvester out, and it, while he's not killing it off, he is forcing it off of the Tiberium Harvesting line, which just delays the economy just a little teeny tiny bit. It's not an absolutely huge deal, but it is an annoying deal, and going to spot the both the Tech and the MCV moving out, and there is no uh, extra hidden production facilities or any sort of tech lab, that would be a pretty darn early tech lab, but also he spotted, hey, there is no aircraft base. Air field air base I don't know why I said aircraft base that was kind of awkward to say but anyways it does look like Spectre going to be playing a little bit more standard he is set up on that high ground which is exactly what you'd expect to see tournament tower being a pretty small map and actually Green Zero grabbing that GDI logistics center so let's take a real quick look at his vision uh, never mind because the pit bull is totally throwing that off and so is that foxhole up there but that logistics center it is good just for the overview that it gives you for the line of sight that it gives you it gives you an additional two or three seconds that you get to see your opponent before you otherwise would if you had just built you know like up to this point or even up to there you still get an extra two or three seconds to see your opponent before you would normally and that gives you an extra couple of seconds to react to move your forces or to start producing your counters whatever it may be and we do have only like seven scorpion tanks six oh never mind <laughs> up to ten now and an eleventh over there so a pretty fearsome group of scorpion tanks and let's get that building out of the way we do have quite a few predator tanks he has to watch out for that stacking because it can be so detrimental physics engine 
not the absolute best in this game because of that stacking and those physics issues, but actually taking a couple of losses, two or three Scorpion tanks do go down for only the price of one Predator tank, which is not too shabby at all, but Spectre going to be getting his economy pretty solidly online, and I, Green Zero not quite as solid on the economy, I would say. He had to deal with those extra power plants going down and that extra damage that he had to put out, but at the same time, the Shadow Teams had to get out that secret shrine to get those and then use that support power to call them in so that was costly in itself i'm not actually sure who is technically ahead but going to get some possible possibly two or three harvester snipes in green zero using just the perfect amount of rockets for each of these harvesters and that is going to be three solid harvester hits and if green zero was behind at all oh the great emps out of specter if green zero was behind at all i think he is definitely on equal or close to equal footing with Spectre right now and Spectre actually pushing forward way forward with his tank not focusing down Green Zero's Predator tanks allowing him himself to take quite a bit of damage from them and even damage on the rear armor doing some extra damage to those Scorpion tanks but he wants to take down these Harvesters as quickly as he can and if he can ex if he can swap three Harvesters for three Harvesters it may be worth it he has lost quite a few tanks he's done some damage to Green Zero's economy to Green Zero's army rather and also he will be able to do some damage to his economy and snipe two harvesters at once there so he's taken out three harvesters if he takes out a fourth it will most likely be worth it but he will get cleaned up by these orcas going to be splitting up the rockets pretty well able to not waste too many of them and going to even get all of these scorpion tanks but the specter he has not rebuilt at all he has been teching up instead and is he going to go for that supercharged particle beam i would love to see it, but I highly doubt it. More likely, if he was going for an upgrade, it would be either EMP coils, because that is so useful, or that Tiberium Core missiles, because he does have the stealth tanks, and that just does so much more damage with that Tiberium Core missile. APC is going to be leading the charge. Curious choice, considering there's nothing in it, and also there's almost no infantry throughout this whole game. There have been a couple of Awakened squads here and there, but uh, not enough to warrant building some APCs. And the Orca is going to be taking a little bit of damage. Not quite got that Tiberium Core upgrade just yet. But a Rifleman Squad going to be here. Oh, and sniping that Harvester and also getting the Sam, not the Sam, sir, type. Can't talk, but the Stealth Tank's able to snipe one Stealth Tank and get a second Harvester without even losing two Orcas is what he lost right there. And the Stealth Tank over here going to escape on through. And he's going to see, hey, Green Zero did in fact grab that Tiberium Spike. That Green Zero would be a fool not to grab any player who does not grab their respective Tiberium Spike. I would say is playing like a fool. And now that I've said that, someone's probably going to be like, hey, I didn't grab that Tiberium Spike. And then I did this crazy thing and won $20,000 in this tournament. And I would be like, oh, well, great. You're the exception to the rule. Shut up. <laughs> Which is exactly how I talk to people for no reason. But sniping two Orcas, I would say that is a pretty big deal because, hey, there goes the major advantage that Green Zero had. He did so much damage with those Orcas, taking out five Harvesters plus a Stealth Tank and just now getting taken out. Was that worth it? Quite possibly, especially if they were able to do some damage. But the, oh, the Stealth Tank, don't hold still, don't hold still. Able to snipe the Juggernaut anyways, that's going to be 500 credits, no, that's going to be 1,000 credits, never mind, the barracks is already here, but 500 credits for that engineer to recap it, assuming he doesn't accidentally crush his own husk, which I'm not actually sure if Predator Tanks will crush your own husk, and is he going to just sneak harvest this, oh my, is that a sensor pod? My gosh, that is so peculiar to see. Anyways, the Awakened going to be using their EMP ability being super annoying right there, and that is exactly what you want them to be doing and just selling off a couple of cheap base defenses can get you some solid EMPs pretty quickly. Needs to have some more defense up here. Spectre, what has he got to deal with this? Not a whole lot, a couple of Awakened squads, some Tiberium troopers, which are, you know, pretty good, but when you've got a Marv, I think, you know, Marv just might win. Especially with a couple of railgun troopers in there, with a couple of zone troopers in there, rather. We're going to be supporting that Marv as well, and... Spectre, what in the world are you doing? He's going for air, and he does have that Tiberium core upgrade, no supercharged particle beams, but other than that, Green Zero actually not harvesting that field hardly at all. He has almost no economy going on. Well, four harvesters, but this late in the game, not expect what well, you'd expect to see. What in the world just happened? 
He must have got some sick EMPs off there, and the mine drop goes down as well. Magnetic mines, because he is going to be he is going to be that marked of Cain faction, and the Orcas are back. Just two of them right now, actually selling off that airfield and then rebuilding it at a slight detriment in cost to himself, and going to be going for the harvesters yet again. Not able to snipe any of them that time, and the economy for Spectre not looking too healthy, but he's harvested a lot more Tiberium. Din Green Zero might even be worth it to throw down another refinery down here in a few moments, because in a few minutes that will be definitely worth it. And throwing down a Tiberium silo just to provide an extra target to shoot at, but Spectre is not going to be falling for that. He's like, hey, I'm going to snipe those husks right out from under you, and the artillery, the uh well, what do you know? The Spectre out of Spectre going to be launching those bombs all the way over and then using that scan to reveal the Harvesters. And we do have such a powerful combo. Those Zone Trooper Hammerheads are so incredibly powerful. And the Vertigo is able to snipe both the Watchtower and, more importantly, the Juggernaut. Oh, but the splash damage from that Juggernaut is good enough to finish off two Harvesters. Both of these players playing pretty strongly. Not, he's not exactly the craziest, best macro games, but an, or, an unorthodox build out of Spectre, and Green Zero is handling it pretty well. Spectre not too keen on the follow-up. He hasn't had a lot of good play in the later part of the game, but he is going to be getting a hammerhead kill almost. That hammerhead is one of the luckiest hammerheads around right now. Actually, technically, I guess he's the luckiest hammerhead around, considering he's the only hammerhead around, but with that zone trooper, Three or four of those can be so, so powerful. And another zone trooper and an engineer into that Marv if the engineer can catch up. It does look like he is going to be going for dual engineer. Probably not triple engineer. That would be a little bit unusual. Yeah, I can understand dual engineer and dual zone trooper. That's a little more usual. But a couple more. Vertigo bombers going to be going for the juggernauts. Not enough to finish either one off. I think this is going to be it for Spectre. I don't know what he has to hold off this Marv. So Green Zero might take an early lead and get a first kill, first blood, so to speak. Marv going to be rolling on down here with Juggernaut Sports, which you got to be really careful. While epic units are good, you have to be careful of things like EMPs because that can be so, so powerful, but not with Juggernaut Support to take out these infantry and double EMP on the Marv, but now the Hammerhead is here to clean up the Tiberium Troopers. Tiberium Troopers do slow down vehicles as well as do a slight amount of damage to them. So, going to be going for that uh, going for that air tower for Spectre. So, Green Zero going to be taking that out just to stop those super annoying Vertigos, and I think this will be it for Spectre. He's going to have to fight long and hard, taking... He's going to have to fight for two games without making a mistake to win this series, or Green Zero will just have to win one more game, assuming Green Zero wins this, but yes, Spectre has been defeated selling off there. I think we could probably all see that coming for the last minute or so as Green Zero just crushed through Spectre's forces because he didn't have anything left. Let's take a look at that resource graph. Yeah, Spectre just kind of plateauing right there, flatlining if you will, and actually leading the economy for the majority of the game, expanding early, ended up paying off, but not really because Green Zero was able to make it work in the long term. And let's take a look at that stats real quick. Unit kill to death ratio doesn't always tell all, but sometimes it's a little bit fun to look at. And it's going to be a 12 and a half minute game, a short start to this round of three going to be happening right here, or should I say best of three? I guess it's not a round of three. It's round of four going to be happening right here this is from the winner's bracket if i did not mention that which i don't think i did august 25th game replays.org 1v1 tournament i know i mentioned that just once again and so we're going to see you in game two to see if green zero can head on to the finals or if specter will be able to hold him off for at least one more game so we can have an ace match which i love me some ace match and i hope you do too but this is cyber signing out